Hi there, my name is Amri Saran, and I am the Managing Director of Press and Strategy at the Israel Project. We're an educational organization that works with reporters on Middle East issues in Washington, D.C. and elsewhere. And I'm also a fellow at the Claremont Institute, where I do international relations and national security. And we're here today to talk about the recent round of sanctions, technically of designations, that the Trump administration handed down on four entities and persons in the Middle East related to extremism, really related to the Muslim Brotherhood and to Iran. The entities that the Trump administration targeted fall into really three different categories. In the first category, you have Hania, who is the head of the Hamas Politburo. And that is a category, and that category is being targeted by the Trump administration because it is broadly a uh, terrorist network, the Hamas terrorist organization. The second sort of category of designations from this round has to do with Muslim Brotherhood splinter groups, and this is uh, in English the Arms of Egypt group and the Banner of the Revolution group. And these are groups that arose during the counter-revolutionary period in Egypt, and they undermine the Egyptian government and they commit acts of terrorism. And that's the second category of, those are the two groups in the second category of designations. And then the third category has to do with Iran proxies across the Middle East, and specifically a group called Al-Sabrin, that is a group in the Gaza Strip, in the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip that Iran has been nurturing there since really around uh, the middle of 2014. And that has to do with Iran's influence across the region. So you've got four different people or entities divided into three groups. The three groups again are Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, and then Iran proxies. What it means to be designated is that the United States government uses either the State Department or the Treasury Department to declare you functionally off limits to international actors, not just actors in the United States, but international actors, and also freezes your assets in the United States. So for these four groups, this one person and three groups, these four entities, if they have any assets in anywhere that the U.S. has jurisdiction over, those assets are now frozen. Now, they don't really have that much, but the second part, the part where we functionally declare them to be off limits to the rest of the international organization, that's where the real influence and the power of the U.S. comes in. And when you're designated like this by the United States, it places you off limits to the international community. Ismail Haniya is the head of the Hamas Politburo. Now, inside Ham about Hamas, when people talk about Hamas, there is a debate. Many people, the Trump administration, uh, the Israelis, Hamas itself, say there's really not much of a distinction. There's no distinction between Hamas's military wing and its political wing. But other groups, including many European countries, create an artificial distinction between the military wing of Hamas and the political wing of Hamas. And the and Hania sits atop the political wing. Now, this is important. The president's move is important because what this does is it says to our allies, including places like Britain, where this is being debated right now, it says, we don't see a distinction between Hamas's military wing and political wing. In fact, we're taking the guy who sits at the very top of the political wing and we're declaring that he is also a terrorist, just like everyone in Hamas's military wing is widely recognized to be terrorists. The Al Sabrin group is a Hamas is a Iran-backed Palestinian group in the Gaza Strip. This is a group that arose in the middle of 2014, as near as we can tell. Uh, they were backed by Iran, and what and they said at the time that the other Palestinian terror groups were just too moderate for them. They were more extreme, Al Sabrin was, than the other Palestinian terror groups. And by designating them, the Trump administration is sending a signal 
that it will begin to actively roll back Iran's proxies across the Middle East. So as everyone knows, the Trump administration from the very, very early days has said it's committed to rolling back Iran's influence across the region. The designation of the al Sabrin group, the Gaza-based, Iran-backed terror group, shows that the Trump administration is serious. The Arms of Egypt and Banner of the Revolution groups are Muslim Brotherhood splinter groups. They are groups that arose during the counter-revolution and they engage in violence. They seek to undermine the Egyptian government. They are basically terror groups. And by designating them, the Trump administration is doing something very important. It is sending a message that it will begin to roll back at least the violent elements of the Muslim Brotherhood. So the Trump administration has long said that the Muslim Brotherhood as a whole is a deeply problematic organization that is info that involves terror groups and that has an extremist ideology that it seeks to impose on uh, that it seeks to impose across the world. Now, there have been debates from the beginning of the Trump administration about how hard to go at the Muslim Brotherhood. What today's designations show is that the Trump administration is beginning to roll back the Brotherhood and step by step to go after elements inside the Brotherhood. All three, uh, all four of these designations and the three categories that they fit into. Remember, we're talking about four persons or entities spread across three different categories, Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, and Iran. These show that the Trump administration is taking seriously its commitments and the president's promises to roll back violent extremist elements, and in the case of Iran, rivals and hostile elements that attack the US directly. And so what these designations show is that the Trump administration is not just committed to rolling back terrorism and rolling back extremism, but that it's beginning to make political statements to send diplomatic signals about that commitment. So this is not just the Trump administration going after extremists. It's the Trump administration going after extremist groups, Muslim Brotherhood groups and Iran groups in a very, very public way showing that it's serious about meeting the commitments that the president has made and about rolling back these extremist elements. Today's designations are going to have broad and lasting effects uh, on how different Middle East actors try to calculate and maneuver uh, in a world in which the Trump administration is changing how American foreign policy works. So to take just one example, Qatar has had a very tense relationship with the Trump administration and with many of the supporters of American allies here in Washington, D.C., both supporters of Israel and supporters of our traditional alliances with the Arab countries. The Qataris instead have been aligning themselves with the Muslim Brotherhood and with Hamas and with Iran. And what these designations show is that if you wanna do that, you're gonna have problems with the United States. And so that's just one example, the Qatari example, of the sorts of differences that these designations make by targeting the Muslim Brotherhood and Iran and Hamas.